We're pleased to be joined by Julie Roginski, president of Comprehensive Communication Group, and our own colleague, Joanna Gagas, host of Life and Living on NJTV and Fios. I want to thank both of you for joining us to discuss a very serious topic. Um, you know, I was, I was framing this in my mind, sexual harassment, sexual abuse, what is going on as we tape this program during the holidays of 2017. How bad is the situation, and has it been this bad that long? Loaded question. I know, and then what the heck do we need to do? Well, I think women have known how long um, it's been bad, and it has been bad, I think, for, I, I don't want to speak for all women, but I speak for a lot of them when I say that women, I think, have been aware of this issue for a long time. I think it's interesting that it's now just coming to the fore, although it's not the first iteration. When I first came up in politics in 1993, we had the Anita Hill uh, Clarence hearings, Thomas. Clarence right. Thomas hearings, and obviously that was a huge bellwether and a huge... Um, driving force for a lot of women to get involved in politics. And then the issue kind of went away. Um, and now it's back and, and really in full force. And I really hope it's not going to take another 20, 25 years for people to focus on what I think is a very serious issue. You know, you have faced this. You have faced this. Yes. You posted something on Facebook about it in connection with the Me Too movement. You cannot talk about certain aspects, <laughs> yes. uh, 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 which we totally understand. Right. But Joanna, when you posted that, I remember reading it and just going through Facebook. And I said, wait, that's our Joanna posting about your experiences and how you've been a victim. Why'd you do that? I did that because there needs to be a sense of solidarity among women. And if I know that I've experienced something and I'm not using my platform, using my voice to not only join in the conversation, make others realize that it's that widespread, that it is people you know, it's people in your family, people you work with, uh, but also because this conversation needs to continue. This can't be a flash in the pan when Harvey Weinstein, the, when the Harvey Weinstein drama dies down, that this goes away. And actually, on a national level, I think so many women have chimed into the conversation mm -hmm. that we are seeing that this does have legs, unfortunately. Do, do you think there really is a, a genuine opportunity to make a real difference right now? Well, I think there's an opportunity to think about why this happens and how it happens. And it doesn't just begin by people grabbing somebody or, or sexually assaulting somebody or sexually harassing somebody. I think it begins when men don't treat women in an equitable way. You know, we, we here in New Jersey spend equitable. A, we here in New Jersey spend a lot of time talking about equal work for equal pay, for example. We don't talk much about equal treatment for equal work. We don't talk about the fact that women have to face not, I'm not talking about the harassment sexually or, or even the sexual assault, God, God forbid, but talking about the day in, day out systemic treatment of women is something that's other, is not quite co equal, is something that's not quite um, worthy of the same merits and attention that men get. And I think women have a lot of work they have to do on a daily basis to be treated, even professionally in the same way that men are, just by virtue of the fact yeah. that they're women. And that but leads to, and that leads it to. It does lead to, of respectfully. Course, it does. I, they're not you. separate issues. Like someone doesn't get the value of a woman, doesn't pay that woman what she's worth, doesn't treat, okay, but Steve, that's bad stuff. How do you connect it because to? Because Steve, if you don't treat a woman equally professionally, it's one step away from not thinking of her as somebody that deserves treatment as a human being, and then you start the grabbing. And then, the and, then, sexual, and then you start the grabbing, and then you start the assault, and then you start thinking of her as a thing and an object, not necessarily somebody that's an equal of yours to be treated with, with respect. And I think that begins not just from a sexual perspective, but also from just a meritorious perspective. Chime in. Absolutely. I think there are abuses of power in many forms, right? right. And it's almost this dehumanization of a woman mm -hmm. where it's the that understanding. That I would never face. That guys not basically in the do same not way. face. Not in the same way. And I think there's a, there's a different conversation here that we, we can get to later on where there's the differences in age, right? Because young boys, I think, can face these kinds of, of situations in a different way um, or maybe in a similar way. But I think it's really um, abuse of power and then really understanding that the way you treat a woman is the way you treat a human. The way you treat a human is the way you treat a woman. Um, and, and it's not just the workplace, truthfully. And that, Go ahead, finish your point. So this conversation, as I see it as a mom, as a, as a working professional, really starts in the home. It starts when we're young. It starts with how we raise our boys and how we raise our girls. Because I'll give you just a quick example. We were out to dinner with family friends, and little boy, same age as my daughter, wanted to kiss my daughter and thought it was really fun. And everyone kind of got a laugh out of it, including my daughter. Did you? 
at first, because it was cute, he's kissing her on the cheek, she's laughing, she seems fine with it. And then this moment changed where she no longer, she didn't like it anymore, and she wanted him to stop, and she was scared to tell him to stop. And in that moment, I had to, I had to realize that it's my job now to empower my daughter, because for the, this is when it starts. So we came home and I said, listen, if you didn't like that, you, t you say stop, and if he doesn't stop, you say stop really loudly and you yell and say, Mommy, I want him to stop. Even with kids. Even with There's kids. There's nothing it cute starts about in that. the home. No. And you've got to, I don't I have a little boy, yeah. yeah. No, no, I have a little boy, and I mean, you know, this is something I've thought about over the last year, certainly a great deal, and it's, I think it's res our responsibility to some extent as parents to teach these little boys, um, including mine, who, you know, now is at that age where girls are a little yucky and girls are not somebody sure. that he wants to necessarily hang out with, and I keep saying, actually, there's really no difference in terms of what boys can do and girls right. can do. And that's something you have to teach kids, I believe, really, especially our boys from day one. So fast forward to older boys, right. men, middle-aged men, me, others. What should we and could we be doing, Julie? Well, I think it really begins with cognitively understanding, and, and this is not to diminish any experience that any man has had, but I don't think you guys really get what... Do we have any what, idea what you're talking you, about? You don't. I mean, I, I, you, you do intellectually, I think. No, you, you, I'm talking about viscerally, viscerally, at a human level. Viscerally, you no more understand what I think we go through than I understand what people who are African-Americans living in an oppressed society might believe or, or, or other people who are not necessarily enfranchised to the extent that, that men are. Um, and so I think it's very important for men to understand that, as I said, this does not just happen overnight where somebody is on the chamber train, for example, and wants to grab, grab a young staffer. This begins when they don't treat the staffer properly verbally. They don't think of her as somebody who's worth it on the merits, and they don't think of her as somebody who's co-equal to the men on the campaign or the men that are co-equal in the office. And so for me, it's very important to understand this doesn't just arise in a vacuum. This arises from something that people have to focus on day in, day out, which is that I know plenty of women mm -hmm. who've had to work 20 times harder to have command the respect that men do um, in the workplace. And then that translates itself into other issues, obviously. So how do we make sure that it doesn't end here? You're talking about, you know, not, you didn't use the term flash in the pan, but the Me Too uh, movement, if you will. How do we make sure that this sustains, but also that it is so, it is seen as so abhorrent, so terrible, so sick, that even if someone's thinking, it can't go backwards. You, you need to expose as much as possible, but any thoughts as to how we sustain this? Absolutely, and I think, so I'm a member of Executive Women of New Jersey, an organization in New Jersey whose mission is to see women in the C-suite, on corporate boards, in positions of power. Would more women in the position of power help as it relates Absolutely. to a lot of the issues we're talking? You believe that? Absolutely, if you wanna change a culture, especially a corporate culture, you need to see women at the highest levels who are dealing with the HR complaints, who are addressing these concerns. Look at the Harvey Weinstein board. They settled. Look at Fox. Look at all of these different companies who have settled these disputes. If you had women in positions of power, more you don't think women, it would, you think it would be more upfront? Hey, let's deal with this. No sweeping it under the rug. I absolutely do. I absolutely do. And I think those women who are in position of power have a responsibility to stand up, even if it's unpopular, even if you're outnumbered. That is how we make a change. Chime in on this one. Well, I totally agree. I mean, look. Ultimately, you have a lot of these corporate boards and a lot of these corporate C-suites, as you said, where you have. A lot of women who work for powerful men. The men, men may be the harassers themselves. Harvey Weinstein's a very good example. I, I can By the way, the others. only one reason yes. I want to mention Kevin Spacey is because there were boys, young boys involved who were victims. Right. It's clearly disproportionately women. But I just want to show respect oh, to some of those folks who are dealing with it. Of course. As well. Um, Go ahead. I'm right. sorry. But you know, it's up to the women. As I think you just made an excellent point. Up to the women who work for these powerful men not to enable this kind of behavior. We've seen it over and Call over it. and over again. Call, call them on it. Call them out. But see, it's, you know, I'll say this. I don't want to say that cavalierly. You no, know, it's not. 30 but, seconds but, left. But you also have to understand, for a lot of these women, this is their livelihood. This is their career. They call these men out. They may be out of a job. I've been in that situation myself. I've called men out on bad behavior. The men have been promoted. I've been sidelined. So that's happened, and, and I'm in a fairly high-ranking world. Yes, you are. World. So, you know, if it happens to me, it can happen to anybody. Julie, Joanna, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. And, and we have no delusion or illusion that we've solved anything, but we've moved the conversation forward Definitely. and we'll continue to do that. Thank you both. Thanks very much. Thank okay. you. Catch you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Varis NJTV studio at Two Gateway.
Funding has been provided by New Jersey Sharing Network, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Seton Hall University, where leaders learn, the New Jersey Association of Health Underwriters, Verizon, the Northward Center, and by Community Food Bank of New Jersey.